Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. And we start with breaking news this afternoon. A major step forward today in the impeachment showdown on Capitol Hill. We're going to go to Washington, D.C. as lawmakers take a vote, making this process very public. Hank? Abroad, happy Halloween, everybody. We have important information to help keep you and your children safe as you head out this evening. It's coming up live in a Help Me Hank report. Definitely want to stick around for that, but we do begin with your Halloween forecast and a look at four live radar and you see nothing but green there. That means that it is coming down right now. And unfortunately, that's not going to change as trick or treating time rolls around. We've got the rain, we've got the wind and dare we even say snow. That's all in your Thursday <laughs> forecast. Meteorologist Brandon Roos standing by with the um, I want to try and find like a silver lining here, but mm -mm, I could really. say the last five years of Halloween's here in Detroit, it's been a little rain, a little wind, a little snow. So that silver lining is that we're just right on par for what we've had the last five years or so. And we will get some breaks here. We're starting to see this last little round of some heavier rains through parts of Washtenaw, Wayne counties up into Oakland County. It is super soaked and it's pooling, ponding, hydroplaning, a possibility wherever you are. Middle 40s. We've been stuck here all day and until it stops raining, we continue that. So showers here at noon soaking wet, but through the mid afternoon, some breaks near 50 degrees. We will see more rain returning. You can see a big slug of this is going to push off to the east. And as we look across Lake Michigan, there's the snow as it comes closer toward trick or treating time changes back to rain for us. So showers and a little breezy around 46 degrees during your trick or treating time. The umbrellas and jackets for sure. <laughs> And make sure you tune in Ben's Freaky Forecast starting at 3 p.m. on Click on Detroit and Local 4 News. We will be updating you throughout the afternoon with live updates on exactly how your trick-or-treating will play out. Evrod? Well, Brandon, with the rain and wind expected for tonight, DTE has a plan in place for trick-or-treaters to stay safe. We really recommend people stay uh, very vigilant about safety. Uh, walk in well-lit areas. Don't cut through yards uh, where hazards could be uh, hidden. Uh, also, look up and look down at our power lines because it's possible that our power lines could be wrapped up in trees if, the, if they come down. DTE says that it's going to have about 100 crews positioned throughout Metro Detroit looking for hazards. The linemen are going to be cleaning up trees, down power lines, and restoring power if customers lose it. And they also plan on staying out throughout the night to keep everyone safe. Those power line precautions, though, aren't the only thing that you should be on the lookout for this Halloween. Our consumer investigator Hank Winchester joining us live this afternoon with more important information to keep the trick-or-treaters safe. Hank? Yeah, Everett, you know, this weather is not ideal, which means it could get a little tricky tonight as you make your way out. The reality is about 10,000 kids across the country are going to make their way to the ER this evening because of issues while trick or treating. So here's some important safety information for you. The numbers are downright frightening. Children are two times more likely to die in traffic related accidents on Halloween night than any other day of the year. That's why safety is key. You may have the candy in the costume, but what about a good flashlight? 41 million children will hit the streets across the country in search of candy, but the majority will not have a flashlight, a big no-no, because that light could help a driver spot you. And when it comes to your children's costume, remember this. If your child is going to wear a mask, um, you want to make sure that the eye openings that, that you can see uh, very clearly, especially in the dark when they're going to be going from house to house. Here's some other important safety info. Try limiting trick or treating to your neighborhood and go to families that you know. Put a name tag with a number on your child's costume in case he or she gets lost. Children under 12 should be accompanied by an adult. Adult supervision is key. Older children should carry a fully charged cell phone in case they need to reach you. Make sure that shoes are tied and that the costume doesn't impair your child's ability to walk or run safely. You know, they can stand still in front of the mirror and look great, but then actually moving in the costume can be difficult. Back out here live, that flashlight with new batteries, also some glow sticks. Those are key. We're going to put all this safety information for you right on the Help Me Hank Facebook page. 
Avrod, back to you. All right, of course. Help me, Hank, keeping everybody safe out there. Hank, we certainly appreciate you. We want to get to some breaking news this afternoon that could impact your travels. Southbound I-75 closed right at Erie Road. That's in Monroe County right now. Because three semis were involved in an accident there and one jackknifed. Now, there are no serious injuries, but it's likely going to take hours before that accident is all clear. So definitely seek an alternate route if your travel takes you through there this afternoon. Also breaking at noon, the first big vote on impeachment proceedings against President Trump has passed the House. It's a resolution that formalizes the procedures and opens the door to public hearings. As Craig Boswell reports from Washington, it passed with a vote of 232 to 196, with many Republicans calling it a sham. On this vote, the yeas are 232, the nays are 196. The resolution is adopted. For only the fourth time in history, Congress is moving forward with a formal impeachment investigation of a president. What is at stake in all of this is nothing less than our democracy. Today, the House voting to take the investigation into President Trump into a public phase. Democrats are trying to impeach the president because they are scared they cannot defeat him at the ballot box. We are here today because grave, dedicated public servants and patrons are standing up for their country. Trying to put a ribbon on a sham process doesn't make it any less of a sham. Today's resolution would permit public hearings, allow staff attorneys to question witnesses, and enable the president or his counsel to participate in the proceedings. Republicans and the president have complained about a process that has so far played out behind closed doors. There's one, one single obsession on Capitol Hill, and it's getting rid of Donald Trump. These proceedings focused on the controversial call between President Trump and the president of Ukraine, and questions of whether there was an abuse of power when in pressuring a foreign country to dig up dirt on a political rival in exchange for military aid. White House official Timothy Morrison was on that call. He's the latest of several witnesses who have testified behind closed doors. Morrison, a top advisor on Russia and Europe, stepped down from his White House post on Wednesday and is testifying against the wishes of the White House. After today's vote, the full House is scheduled to go on a week-long break. Committee members will stay behind and continue with depositions. Craig Boswell, NBC News, Washington. Developing this afternoon, police in West Bloomfield are increasing patrols outside of schools today after a nearby gun shop is broken into. Kego Harbor police are looking for these two, and they say they use a sledgehammer to break into safes and guns unlimited. It's the gun store right there on Orchard Lake near Commerce Road on Tuesday. They stole several long guns and ammo. West Bloomfield School saying that the suspects appear to be preteens and out of precaution, they're going to have more officers keeping an eye on area schools. If you know anything about this break in, Kego Harbor Police want to hear from you. Two men were arrested for a liquor store break in in Highland Park this morning. Police say the suspects busted a hole in the back of Bargain Basket Liquor Store right there on Hamilton near the Davison. One man was able to get away as police arrived. There's no word on if anything was taken. All right, so it's been confirmed. The board of Fiat Chrysler and French company Peugeot have approved a merger. It's going to create the world's fourth largest automaker at a value of about $50 billion. The company announced this morning plans to combine operations in a 50-50 merger. They're going to share the cost of developing electric and autonomous cars and will share vehicle technology. So tomorrow, national and local UAW leaders will meet here in Detroit to consider a deal with Ford. Last night, after three days of intense bargaining, the union said that it had reached a tentative agreement with the automaker, and it's likely going to mirror the deal that was approved by General Motors workers after that 40-day strike. And if approved by leadership, it's going to be sent to Ford's 55,000 union workers for a final vote. New at noon. Mmm, that's not hot sauce in those bottles. Take a look here. We'll tell you what was really inside of all this sriracha shipment out of the United States that has some people in some pretty big trouble. And nowhere close to containment. At least 10 new wildfires start in California as intense winds show no sign of letting up. We've got to look at the firefight coming up.